my dad and I were pushing the shopping cart through Harris Teeter, the grocery store dad goes to for social interaction several times a week, even when he doesn't really need food. He never fails to see someone he knows from church or work or someone he knew through mom. He broached the topic. I wasn't meant to be alone, he said. It was the first Christmas after mom died and we were trying to pull together meals. What do we need for the vegetarian brother and his wife, the tween age nephews, the picky eater new wife of the other brother? What do we need? I wasn't meant to be alone, he says again. He wasn't talking about going to the grocery store. No, he was prepping me for the I'm dating again conversation. <laughs> Wandering up and down the aisles, I realize that to a passing stranger, he and I look like the couple dad hoped he might one day be part of again. A May-December relationship doing the grocery shopping. Though as a pregnant 39-year-old, I felt more August than May. <laughs> Ripe and slow-moving. And dad, at 70, viewed himself much more as October than December. He had life left in him yet, and he wanted to share it with someone. It wasn't supposed to be this way. Dad and I weren't supposed to be meal planning and definitely not having this conversation. Mom would have done all the shopping and some of the baking. She would have it already done. This is what she did ever since my grandmother relinquished the role of family matriarch. I was supposed to apprentice to mom and eventually take over as the only female heir to all the holiday cooking. The very fact that we were in the grocery store wandering the aisles, throwing frozen mac and cheese, a turkey, and yogurt tubes into the cart was an indication that something had gone terribly wrong. Your mother knew I couldn't be alone. I listened calmly. After all, what did I expect? Dad had a different future now, one that he hadn't imagined and one that I certainly hadn't imagined. Of course, I knew or hoped that I would outlive my parents. I just figured that one day Dad would have the big one, the heart attack that would end it all and then mom would live another 20 years. Instead, dad and I were considering the dairy aisle. Dad's new future was one that in some ways invigorated him. Yes, he was grieving mom and his sorrow was profound, but he was also exercising. He was losing weight. I was proud of myself separating my grief for mom with my support for dad but this was hard for me to see. What would mom have given to see dad take better care of himself? If I was honest, it made me angry. But I wasn't in being honest mode. I was in coping with the holidays mode and I noted with detached interest how well I was doing. It sounds silly, but I just hadn't considered why dad might be taking better care of himself. Perhaps I just thought that mom's death had made him feel his own mortality. As we walked through the dairy aisle, I tried to absorb the idea that my dad was taking better care of himself because for the first time in more than 40 years, he was anticipating someone other than mom or his doctors seeing him naked. <laughs> At least he hoped so, <laughs> or maybe already had. I also knew that this meant mom and dad had had conversations in that short six weeks between her diagnosis and her death that I could not begin to imagine. Your mother thought I should be with Langley. He named one of the few single women they knew. Mom got along well with Langley and I guess she wanted to be able to imagine the woman dad would be with after she was gone. Still I was calm. Two adults talking as we filled the shopping cart with boxes of cereal and bottles of wine. Dad continued, but I don't want to be with Langley. 
Because first of all, she's Langley. <laughs> and secondly, she has herpes. <laughs> My calm detachment was shattered. <laughs> I did not want to imagine how dad knew about the herpes. I no longer wanted to be an adult. I wanted my mom. I wanted things to be the way they had always been, even if I hadn't always liked the way things were then. My brothers and I would come home with our families to see mom and dad and have Christmas the way we always had Christmas. We wait until everyone is up to go into the living room to see what Santa had brought. No peeking until we're all together. Breakfast next, and then take turns opening presents. Of course there would be food. Turkey, dressing, oysters, green beans, rice, gravy. And to demonstrate pleasure and satisfaction with the Christmas dinner, my father would always fall out of his chair onto the dining room floor moaning that he was too full to even get to the sofa for his post-dinner recovery. <laughs> my brothers and I would follow suit. My mom never did fall on the floor, but she would always smile at the silliness of us and would be pleased at the compliment indicated by our gesture. Frozen mac and cheese did not inspire the same passions. Mom was not there and would not be. And I had inherited much more than responsibility for the holiday meals. I was the closest woman dad had to mom, both in terms of DNA and in knowing what I could, as much as a daughter can, about their 42-year marriage. I nodded my understanding of dad's rejection of Langley. That's what he needed more than a lecture about safe sex or statistics about how many adults in this country have the herpes virus. <laughs> he needed a substitute for mom to bless his rejection of mom's choice for him. So that's what I did. And as we left the grocery store, my father entered the world as an eligible bachelor. And I took up new roles too. Not as the family matriarch, but instead as dad's wingman, his, <laughs> his confidant, his therapist, and his connection to mom. Hell, I've even signed dad up for Match.com. <laughs> Writing a dating profile for your father is an exercise in compartmentalization. <laughs> Now it is the fifth Christmas after mom died. I'm so far away from home that sometimes, sometimes I can almost pretend that I just haven't talked to mom for a while. But then the holidays come around again and call bullshit on that. It isn't the same and it will never be the same. Marion Wilson.